So on my grocery list, I have craniectomy, bone flap craniotomy, excision meningioma, and it comes to a neat $232,736.56. What a bargain. Don't worry, I have insurance. But man, this makes me worry about people who don't. There are so many things I wanna tell you and also so many things I really don't wanna tell you. But bottom line is that I'm fine. Surgery went really well. I can see out of both of my eyes and my brain seems to be working just as fine or as poorly as it was before. I had grade one meningioma and it's seen as like a good brain tumor to have, but talking about a good brain tumor feels a little bit like talking about a fun traffic jam. There's nothing good or fun about them. They just suck different amounts. So I named my tumor Brian the brain tumor because things just get less scary if you name them. And he had like definitely made himself comfortable in there and had grown into my jaw muscle and into my eye orbit and into my bone. So now I have titanium mesh in the bone that separates my brain from my eye. And I don't think that's a party trick that's gonna give me a lot, but still. The scar though. It's a pretty significant upgrade considering that my second coolest scar is from removing a birthmark on my butt. <laughs> so the days before surgery, I was like this weird combination of terrified and also really calm. Um, Cause it's like, you, it's out of your control. There's nothing you can do about it. And my mom and my sister was there and Scott who works with me and is also one of my best friends. And we had to get up at 4.30 AM to go to the hospital. And I had started writing these letters to like people, the people I love just being like, hey, I don't know if I'm gonna be myself for a while. So I just wanted to remind you that I really love you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, it was just the fucking saddest thing I've ever done. And I just couldn't finish the letters because I was like, this is terrible. Screw these letters. I'm just going to have to wake up fine because I don't want to have to do this. And I did wake up fine. Surgery took nine hours and I came out of anesthesia just overhearing this nurse talking about how I am on YouTube because I think she had seen me talk at some event here in San Francisco. So she was like, don't you know who she is? She's famous to the other nurses. And it was such a like weird and surreal thing <laughs> to wake up to. So I was just like, please subscribe. No, I did not say that. But I had told my family to tweet an update as soon as they knew how the surgery had went because I knew that a lot of you were waiting and that you were worried. They tweeted that I had said something inappropriate and the inappropriate thing that I would said was my surgeon, his name was Dr. Reddy, which is like the best name of a doctor ever. But before surgery, I had forbidden myself from like joking about his name because you don't want to like upset the person who's about to shave your head when you're unconscious. <laughs> I feel like neurosurgeons, they wouldn't let themselves do a bad job on the brain, but he could definitely have gone a little bit more creative with the shaving. <laughs> so Dr. Reddy came over as I was getting out of anesthesia and he was like, hey Simone, how are you feeling? And the first thing I said after nine hours of surgery was, hi Dr. Reddy, do people make a lot of puns about your name? <laughs> and my family was like, oh my God, she's still herself. <laughs> By the way, just a parenthesis, Dr. Reddy was so great. I'm not an expert, but he seems to have done an okay job on my brain, but um, he was also just so nice and pleasant and funny, just great. Thanks, Dr. Reddy. I spent two days at the hospital and those days were really not fun. I was pretty much constantly throwing up and vomiting and my hips hurt really badly from laying down so much and I could like walk up and down the hallway, but that was pretty much it. Also, I got this really weird thing where I had air trapped inside of my head because when you have craniotomy, there can be like air bubbles that, that are inside of your skull. And it meant that every time I would move my head, there would be this like weird bloop, 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 bloop sound. <laughs> and also in certain positions, there would be this like dripping sound. It sounded like, like water drops in a cave, like bloop, bloop. 
Nope. And I guess it was just like spinal fluid dripping off of my brain. <laughs> uh, so that was fun. Also, my most sincere apologies to the nurse that helped me shower. Because I obviously had a catheter for surgery and when they put it in, they like inflate a balloon in your bladder because it's more fun that way. So they had removed it just earlier that day. So when I was in the shower with the nurse, I made like the longest fart. It was like long and loud. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But that did not come from my butt. That came from my pee hole. I'm really sorry, I couldn't help it. So the weeks of surgery, I've been feeling better and better. Um, I don't seem to have lost any cognitive abilities and my eyesight is still 20-20. At first, I kind of look like Gollum or like Smeagol right as he transitions to Gollum. And then I kind of started looking like the evil kid in Toy Story. I still kind of do, but it's definitely gotten a lot better. But pretty much all I did was like lay around on this lounger in my garden and eat a lot of food because I had to take a bunch of steroids to reduce the swelling of my brain and it made me so hungry and so angry. I was riding in a car with my friend and we we're trying to find parking in a parking lot and I started giving people the finger, which I don't think I've ever done previously in my life. My friend was like, Simone, you can't flip people off. What are you doing? And I was like, these people are moving so fucking slowly. It's like they had brain surgery. I don't think I've ever been as angry in my entire life. Angry and hungry. Now I'm just like happy and hungry. A lot of people on Twitter have asked me if I've like changed personality since surgery, which just for like the record is a pretty rough question to ask somebody who just went through brain surgery like it's fine with me but just for like future reference but yeah of course I've changed personality not because like the surgeon like slept with a scalpel or sneezed or something like that but just because I've gone through this pretty major thing and major things change you no matter if you want it or not I think long term it's actually gonna be a really positive thing. People should be faced with losing everything a little bit more often because it really helps put a lot of things into perspective. And I, I mean, I had kind of come to terms with the thought of like, not only losing my life, but losing everything that made up my life and losing everything that made up me and waking up and feeling fine and feeling like myself is like, the biggest relief of my entire life. And everything just felt like it was shiny and beautiful. And I was like, I can't believe I'm fine. So the six weeks of recovery is over today, which means that I'm gonna get back to a pretty normal schedule. I'm obviously still not fully recovered, but I'm allowed to walk up and down stairs myself and I'm allowed to lift more than five pounds. So that's really exciting. Also, last minute, we decided to hire a documentary filmer. So I have a bunch of footage from before surgery, around surgery, and in recovery, and we still haven't figured out what to do with that, but there might be something down the line. We'll, we'll see. It's so good to be back. Thanks for like going through this super weird experience with me having all of you in such a real and concrete way made it a lot more bearable. I'd rate having a brain tumor two out of 10 stars. It wasn't that great, but you know what they say about brain tumors. They really grow on you. I'm so sorry. It's such a bad joke, I can't believe. Blame Brian for that joke. Okay, bye.